I made this album in response to this building in Chicago. It was called the Stony Island Art Bank, and it's an old bank that had fallen out of use. It was going to be pulled down by the city, but it was saved from demolition by an artist called Fiesta Gates. And I went to visit it in 2017 just to see what it was like. I knew that it was beautiful inside, and I went inside and saw this huge library with 26,000 books. I saw um, objects from America's past, complicated objects. I saw all of Frankie Knuckles' records. They're all housed in this library. And when I left, all I could think about were the things I saw and the stories, and that I wanted to go back when I, I found that I was writing songs and writing poems. And one time when I was in the bank, engaging with the objects, the difficult and problematic objects from America's history, I found these same themes coming up over and over again in postcards, in newspaper articles, in objects for the home, the erasure of black childhood, the erasure of black women's femininity, the erasure of black personhood. And that came into this piece of music. <laughs>
was exploring around this building. I went there lots of times. And everything was stored in drawers and cupboards. You had to unwrap objects, these historical objects. Everything was kind of covered up and hidden away. But I guess because these objects are, you know, sometimes difficult to even be around or look at. But I found this one tin of this beauty product. And it was by a company called Valmor. And the, the Valmor company really intrigued me. They were popular in the 1950s. They sold beauty products door to door. So someone would arrive at your door with you know, a basket of perfumes and you know, various things that you could take into your home. But they use really romantic, uh, they use really romantic phrases when they were selling their products. If you bought a perfume from Valmore, it would be called something like, follow me boy, or look me over. And when I read adverts for the company, they said things like, his eyes will follow you across the room. I was really intrigued by the company. The artwork was done by this black artist called Charles Dawson, and the target market was black women and black men. But because it was 1950s America, the beauty was very much more closely aligned with white beauty. So if you bought a hair product, it might be a hair straightening product, or the cream, the face cream might be a skin a lightning cream. I thought of what it must be like to answer the door to these people and be a woman in the 50s with all the pressure to conform and then how to take your beauty from here to something that was further away. And so I wrote this piece of music and at the beginning of the song, the person is very much under the spell of Falmore. And then halfway through, something else happens, I shall see. Lipstick, my black 
hair kinking, my black skin gleaming, my prom red lipstick. So you could look at a huge shelf where the magazines have been bound by year and just decide which year you want to sort of be in. And I chose 1954. I thought, what, what was it like here in 1954? And I opened up the magazine and saw this photograph of this beauty queen. And she was wearing a bathing suit and she was wearing fireman's boots and she was hanging off the back of a fire engine. But she just had this particular look on her face. She looked so wild and free. And I wanted to know who this woman was, this young black woman. And I saw she was called Audrey Smaltz. And so I was intrigued about her and found out that she had won Miss New York Transit. And I found all about her life. She was really easy to track. She was on, she was on YouTube and she had been in the New York Times. And she'd become very famous in fashion and, and in music. and. And I found out that she would be about 86 years old. And we managed to find her in Harlem. And I had this great interview with her. She even came to our show in Harlem. You know, she's still so very wild and free. But there was something about that photograph that just told me that she was a rebel. And this is her son. Yeah. 